Now your model you have explored theoretically, but can it also be tested experimentally? So we're, um, we're at an interesting point in time at the moment because the, the technology is coming to a stage where we can manipulate these kind of systems and um, perform partial swaps on qubits. So, um, so at the moment, we can actually implement a very simple version of the quantum homogenizer. And we've done this using um, nuclear magnetic resonance qubits and MR qubits. We've done a collaboration with um, an experimental group and um, performed an experiment with a very small homogenizer of four qubits and then transformed a pure state to a mixed state using these partial swaps between the qubits and of the same firm mixed to pure state and then measured the states and been able to see um, the changes in von Neumann entropy when, when you calculate them from those states. So that's the kind of first step of doing an analysis of the homogenizer experimentally. But for, the, for these constructor-based irreversibility ideas, what you really need is a really big system of loads of qubits and to be able to reuse them lots of times. And that's going to be quite challenging experimentally, um, especially at the moment, it's difficult to scale up to lots of qubits and to be able to redo those interactions lots of times. But um, I think as quantum technology keeps developing at the moment at a really quick pace, um, that could be something that we could do in the future is, or think about now about how we design those experiments and then implement them in the future. In your research, you rely on concepts like von Neumann entropy and Landauer's principle. So first of all, what is Landauer's principle and why is it relevant to the quantum homogenizer and all of this irreversibility? So Landauer's principle says that when you, um, when you erase information, there's some minimum entropy cost to performing that erasure. So, um, so erasing information, specifically, it means um, this kind of reset process, which is, if you just imagine it using bits for now, before we get to qubits, if you have um, a bit that can be a zero or a one, and you want to make sure that it becomes a zero, then you reset the qubit. So it, whatever state it was before, or you reset the bit, so whatever state it was before, it's going to become a zero. So that's a reset process, which is a type of erasure, and that has to have some minimum entropy cost to the environment. So the, any machine used to implement that kind of reset process, you have to have some increase in entropy to compensate for perform, the fact that you've performed that resetting process. So the way that it relates to the homogenizer is that um, transforming the, the bit that can be a zero or a one to definitely being a zero um, is the kind of parallel of transforming a mixed state to a pure state because a pure state is kind of definitely in a particular state whereas a mixed state could be a zero or a one if you measure it. So you have this, um, this parallel of the reset process for quantum mechanics and then um, and how this links to the homogenizer is that the homogenizer can transform a, a mixed state to a pure state. And so that's the process that we know has this entropy cost from Landau's principle. And that, um, so that has to increase the entropy of the homogenizer when it performs that transformation. So what, um, what I'm interested in looking at is the fact that the homogenizer can perform this, can perform the pure to mixed transformation lots of times, but it can't perform the mixed to pure transformation lots of times. And the mixed to pure transformation is, has this, um, this cost from Landau's principle. So I'm interested in seeing if this has, um, if there's kind of an extra cost to the, the effect of Landau's principle of transforming a mixed state to a pure state. Is there something um, like an extra disadvantage to using a machine to transform mixed states to pure states because of this extra 
deterioration when you use it lots of times that we don't see when you transform a pure state to a mixed state. And I think it'll be really interesting if there's a link between these ideas of information erasure and Landau's principle and the constructor-based irreversibility that we've found in, in the model of the quantum homogenizer. And I imagine if there are connections to be found, these connections will be applicable more generally than just to the quantum homogenizer, is, would be my guess. Yeah, I think it would be um, yeah, interesting to see how these um, how the constructor-based irreversibility links to links to information erasure. If it does, I think that would be a kind of um, yeah, it would be interesting to investigate that using systems other than the quantum homogenizer uh, to perform the same task and see if the same patterns hold and if this is um, part of some more general effect rather than something specific to the quantum homogenizer. And in addition to Landauer's principle, you worked with uh, von Neumann entropy. So first of all, what is the role of von Neumann entropy in quantum mechanics? And then how does it apply to the transformations caused by your quantum homogenizer? So in, um, in quantum mechanics, we use von Neumann entropy as the kind of, um, it's the parallel of the Gibbs entropy that we use in classical, in normal mechanics. So, um, so it's the measure we have of disorder on the quantum scale that we can quantify. We can quantify that a system of qubits has a certain amount of entropy, a von Neumann entropy, a certain, a single qubit has a certain amount of von Neumann entropy. And it's a measure of the uncertainty we have about the state of that qubit. So a pure state, which we know for definite which state it's in, that's a, um, that has zero von Neumann entropy because it's kind of completely ordered. We know exactly where it is. Whereas a maximally mixed state, like a qubit that could be a zero or one when you measure it and you just don't know, that's the, um, that has maximum von Neumann entropy. So, um, yeah, so a qubit in a maximally mixed state has maximum von Neumann entropy. And so we can use the von Neumann entropy as a measure of how, um, how pure or mixed qubits are. It also tells us about the level of entanglement in a system because um, if there's entanglement, so quantum correlations between two qubits, then that um, contributes a negative von Neumann entropy. And so we need to take all these factors into account when we're trying to analyze the entanglement in the system or what's happening to the pure and the mixed states. And another thing to note about the role of von Neumann entropy in quantum mechanics is that when you just, if you're evolving a system entirely using quantum theory, then the overall von Neumann entropy has to stay constant. And so that can't change um, as you evolve your system. So the way that the von Neumann entropy comes into the quantum homogenizer is that when you're transforming a mixed state to a pure state, then um, the von Neumann entropy of your qubit that you've transformed goes down and decreases. And so there must be some kind of increase in von Neumann entropy to compensate because overall it has to stay constant. And so the, that increase comes from the, um, the all the homogenizer qubits um, increasing in entropy. So each of the homogenizer qubits has increased a tiny bit in entropy and that um, all adds up to compensate for the decrease in entropy when you've transformed your system from a mixed state to a pure state. And so that increase in entropy from the homogenizer qubits is this, um, this cost that we know has to be there from Landau's principle, this entropy cost in the that has to accompany decreasing the entropy of the mixed state to turn it into a pure state. And, um, and so what we find is that the von Neumann entropy behaves kind of symmetrically when we compare the two tasks, the mixed state to a pure state and the pure state to a mixed state. Because um, if you transform mixed state to a pure state, your system qubit decreases in entropy, your homogenizer increases, 
and the same thing in reverse for the um, pure to mixed, your system will increase in entropy and your homogenizer will decrease in entropy to compensate. So um, what we're interested in looking at is seeing if there's a different type of quantity that kind of captures the irreversibility that we found using the relative deterioration. Um, because the von Neumann entropy kind of varies symmetrically and doesn't show a difference in, your, in using the homogenizer lots of times to transform a pure state to a mixed state or the reverse process. So, um, so it'd be interesting to look at different quantities, different ways of quantifying entropy and um, physical quantities in the system to see what relates to the um, constructor-based irreversibility of the homogenizer performing the, the pure to mix and mix to pure tasks. So it sounds like you are pretty confident that you can't chalk up the irreversibility to von Neumann entropy, but it seems like it's related to the relative deterioration quantity that you've been measuring. But then the question is, how can we generalize from relative deterioration to exp explain and maybe express this irreversibility universally across all systems in some domain? Yes, yeah, so I, I think of the, the relative deterioration as a kind of first attempt at trying to quantify this um, constructor-based irreversibility for this specific system. And so I think the next steps would be to, to see, you know, is there a better quantity than the way the relative deterioration is currently defined? Is there a better way of defining it? Um, is there a way to link it to the kind of more well-known physical properties of the system? Um, so the first thing to do is to kind of find the best measure of relative deterioration for this system, the quantum homogenizer. And then, um, then in the future, if there's other systems that are displaying this kind of constructor-based irreversibility, then you can see if a similar quantity can be constructed for them in the same way that it was constructed for this system and kind of use it as an example of how to define the quantity of relative deterioration and then try and apply it to another system. So I think if um, following that process through of applying this notion of relative deterioration to different physical systems could allow you to eventually bring those together to some kind of more generalized measure of um, how to quantify whether your task is possible or not possible with a constructor. That sounds very interesting. Now, is this an ongoing research program? Yes, so it's um, an aspect of the wider, the constructor theory of thermodynamics in general is trying to, um, to frame the laws of thermodynamics in a way that's independent of specific dynamical systems so that we don't need to specify I'm working in quantum theory or I'm working in another type of specific dynamical system to be able to draw conclusions about um, the possibility and impossibility of tasks. So the quantum homogenizer is like a, a test model for the ideas of the constructive theory of thermodynamics, but within specific dynamics, within the dynamics of quantum theory and seeing what happens when we apply those ideas from the more general constructive theory to this specific model with these specific dynamical laws. So do you think that um, relative deterioration will be eventually, or is the hope that relative deterioration for the quantum homogenizer is merely a special instance of some more general way of quantifying uh, irreversibility across all systems that conform to the constructor theory principles of thermodynamics? Yeah, I think at least the, the notion of relative deterioration, I think that the way it's physically quantified at the moment probably will evolve as we understand more about the system and, um, and about how to, yeah, the best way of quantifying the irreversibility because I don't think there's, um, there's not a straightforward way of seeing the best way to quantify it, but I think that um, it will evolve to become something that's a kind of more robust measure of how to how to quantify this irreversibility and apply that um, to systems that display constructor-based irreversibility in general rather than just 
this specific case and yeah, try and um, apply the idea more broadly. So speaking of applying it more broadly, uh, which open problem that follows from your work on the quantum homogenizer and irreversibility most excites you moving forward, whether it's something you're working on or something you hope someone else works on eventually as well? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm really interested by the the role it can play as a toy model for the constructive theory of thermodynamics. I think that's really um, interesting avenue, but I'm particularly interested in seeing this if there's a link with the information erasure side of things um, for this specific model is transforming because it relates to this transforming of mixed states to pure states and pure states to mixed states and because there's that link with Landau's principle and whether you can erase information or not I think um, it's really interesting to investigate exactly um, how information erasure or ideas about um, quantum information in general and manifested in constructive based irreversibility and if there's some kind of other avenue that would be interesting to look at in that direction. So um, yeah, I'm interested in the context of the homogenizer as a toy model for constructive based irreversibility but also this specific way it links up with erasure and other ideas in quantum information. Yeah, and it sounds like uh, it could potentially have a lot of implications for technological or for nanoscale technology. So that's very exciting as well to look out for. So Maria, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks.